and welcome to AF Math and Engineering. If you're enjoying our channel, hit the subscribe button and the like button down below as we're always releasing new content. Enjoy! Hey guys, welcome back. Fred here from AF Math and Engineering. And in this video, we're going to do another ETABS tutorial from you. So we got some really, you know, good feedback from our other ETABS videos. Uh, people like them. And uh, we did get a lot of questions as regard in regards to what's the difference between uh, wind loads applied to diaphragms and to shell objects. So that's what this video is going to cover. And, you know, we're going to cover uh, basically how we do it, how ETABS calculates them, what's the difference, and in real life, kind of what do we do. So let's go ahead, let's get into it, and then we can just get into more in depth about, you know, all of these topics. By the way, guys, if you're enjoying our videos and, you know, you like our ETABS tutorials, let us know in the comments down below what you want to see next. And, you know, hit that subscribe button so you always see our updated uh, videos and content as it comes out. So let's, you know, for example, let's say, uh, let's make it a six-story building. That's fine. All of this stuff, we can leave it. Uh, we don't really care right now. Obviously, if we were modeling it, all of this would be important, but it's not right now. For flat slab, let's just, uh, let's, let's, let's make our building a flat slab. One thing we do want to change here is... Uh, for this example, I want to apply the diaphragm manually because I want to show you something. So uh, we're going to just say no diaphragm here. So let's generate our structure and then we can get right into how to apply wind loads using diaphragms. So we have our structure here, okay? And uh, let's go right into um, our load cases, so our load pattern. So let's take a look and um, at our load patterns and let's talk about it a little bit and we're going to explain uh, a couple things. So first, right off the bat, we're going to go to wind, okay? And we're going to select type wind. Now, when we go to auto lateral load, keep in mind we haven't done anything to our structure yet. We haven't applied any diaphragms to any any floors or anything like that. So um, just remember that. So when we go to auto lateral load for wind, um, we're going to be given a drop down menu. We can use the National Building Code of Canada 2015. Um, I'm also familiar with 2010, but we can use 2015 for this and um, you can use whatever it is that you're using, uh, your company uses or whatever uh, country you're from. So the important thing to note here is that we can do this one of two ways. Um, we can either calculate the forces on the structure ourselves uh, using Excel or by hand and we can apply that to ETABS or we can have ETABS automatically generate these loads. Uh, it's really up to you. I know where I work, we do it uh, manually using Excel because we have a little more control over our forces and we don't just want to trust ETABS, um, but that's you know up to you. So first of all, we're going to look at the auto case and that's probably what we're going to do in this video. And uh, But I will show you how to do it the other way as well. So first of all, we have our wind. Let's add our wind load and we can go to modify lateral load. So this screen comes up. Now, this is the point of this video. What is the, what is the difference between these two? So the difference in ETABS is that if we select exposure from shell objects, what's going to happen is we have a video on this. What's going to happen is we're going to apply a cladding around our building and then we're going to give uh, ETABS these values and it's going to kind of just put the wind load on the cladding and then it's going to see what happens and then from what happens it's going to calculate the loads. So it, you don't have a lot of control with this uh, uh, exposure from shell objects. Like your structure is going to kind of behave realistically but a lot of the times when we're expo uh, when we're applying lateral loads to our structure uh, the code specifies that we need to do um, you know a number of different load sets uh, the code specifies that we need to apply our load in a certain way so we need to maybe apply it with a certain eccentricity x and y and we need to apply moments so um, that doesn't really allow us to do that with shell objects which is why it's not commonly used so we're going to apply to extensive diaphragms. So what does that mean? Well, um, what's going to happen is ETABS is going to recognize where our diaphragms are, which are going to be applied to our floors and our openings. And what it's going to do is it's going to calculate the plan dimension of each floor, and it's also going to calculate the story heights. Based on that, it's going to apply lateral loads to the floors in X and Y directions, and it's also going to generate torsional moments. And uh, those torsional moments are going to be as a result of those eccentrically loaded uh, lateral forces. So let's take a look at all of these and um, you know it depends on your building code what these are. We can go over them really quickly but that's not the point of this video. So CP, uh, windward and leeward pressure coefficients, 
these are in your code you should know how to calculate these or at least assume a value so um, we'll come back to wind direction in a sec so case um, as you can see according to the MBCC 2015 ETABS is going to generate all of these load cases for us so it's uh, X and Y and then you know different uh, X and Y with eccentricities and the ratio of eccentricity is even given by this code clause here you can change that if you need to Q we have CG now CG is important for wind um, in the MBCC in, in Canada we can use two if we're using the static procedure for wind and 2.5 uh, for sorry two for structural elements and 2.5 for non structural elements however um, if our structure is dynamically sensitive um, that just means you know there's a list of clauses in our uh, code such as you know if it's too tall compared to its width or has a certain frequency then we're going to need to do the dynamic procedure with CG which involves finding the fundamental of the natural frequency of vibration and it's going to increase our CG so for now though we'll just leave everything default but keep that in mind that you know we are simply going through this now and this isn't exactly an accurate result we're just showing you how to use this um, to apply your loads and you can select your terrain type and exposure height which is typically going to be our whole floor and we're usually going to cut off the structure at the ground anyway let's not include the parapet and let's press ok so bef and before we uh, leave here I wanted to show you this so wind direction and exposure width so if we click here as you can see there's nothing here and that's because we haven't applied any diaphragms yet to our structure so it's important to apply the diaphragms and then generate this load pattern and uh, so we, you know ETABS recognizes it so let's go back and uh, before we leave let's uh, the screen let's check out um, something else so if we go to auto lateral load and we go to user loads okay we're gonna modify our load and then we're gonna modify the lateral load as you can see we just get this screen now if we wanted a little more control what we could do is we could generate different load patterns for example wind and X wind and Y and then we could do the torsional moment in X and Y we could do this on a spreadsheet and we could just input it however like uh, the previous NBCC uh, the auto load ca category we need to apply our diaphragms before anything is going to show up on here so um, that's just if we want to manually input the loads so let's um, apply our diaphragms to our floors and then we can take a look at how to run this so if we select an object type we're going to select our floors Okay, and we're also going to select our openings okay and we're going to go to assign shell and we're going to go to diaphragms so d1 is the default rigid diaphragm in etabs let's apply that and as you can see now we have rigid diaphragm or rigid diaphragms applied on all of our floors now let's go back to our load pattern and let's now this is what we need to do so if you had it on NBCC 2015 you're gonna to need to either delete it or you can switch it to something and then switch it back to NBCC 2015 right so the second you switch it back the second you switch it back like this and we go to modify as you can see now our floor heights are all in here uh, that's different than what it was before and we have our the width of each of our floors Okay, and that's how we're going, ETABS is going to know where to apply these loads. Now, we know that ETABS is recognizing that we have diaphragms, so it has something to apply the loads to. Now we're going to go ahead and we're just going to run it. So, we've run our, uh, we've run our model, and now really it's, it's, it's up to you to take the information that you need. Um, it depends on what you're trying to do, if you're trying to find drifts, if you're trying to find... Uh, if you're trying to design your walls for wind, you know, those are all different um, things that you can get out of ETABs from applying your wind load. Um, right off the bat, I can show you a couple things that you might won't be interested in. We can go to display uh, story response plots, and we can kind of take a look at what ETABs has uh, applied to our auto lateral loads to diaphragms. And these load sets are these different combinations. So this is an X and Y, and then we start to get X with eccentricity, Y with eccentricity. Um, down here so um, the, you know a conceptual thing to note is that the loads applied with no eccentricity are going to give us probably a larger base reaction but the torsional moment created by the eccentric loads um, will be larger uh, in those load sets and I'll show you that when we look at the base reaction so let's look at the base reactions we can do that by coming over here and going to tables we're gonna go to analysis results 
reactions and base reactions. And if we take a look at our base reactions, okay, this wind one and wind two case are just the load in the x and the y direction with no eccentricity. As we can see, this base shear is higher than all the others. However, the torsional moment, uh, which is generated from some eccentric load, is higher in these lower cases here, specifically wind seven. So that's an important thing to note. Also, we have our moments for, due to our wind. And, um, you know, this might be information that you need at your job or at school or whatever. Um, as well, you know, we can take a look if we want to find our fundamental period of our structure, if we want to calculate CG, or if we need this, that's where we find that, uh, modal participating mass ratios. You know, it, it all really depends on what it is that you want. Um, if you're looking for something specific, you know, leave a comment down below. If you want more videos on how to find certain results, let me know. I think that's pretty much it. I think we covered everything. We showed you how to apply diaphragm loads. And now that we've applied them, um, we've generated them in all directions. And now we can just interpret the results as we want. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this video. Hit the like button, hit the subscribe button. Let me know if this was helpful for you, if it answered your questions. I know we were getting a lot of questions on this topic. Hope you enjoyed it. And again, hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching, guys.